There was a horrific and grotesque murder of Muslims that occurred yesterday in a home near the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. The dead are Dia Barakat, 23 years old, Barakat's wife, uh, Yusor Abu Salha, 23 years old, and Yusor's sister, Razan Abu Salha, 21 years old. Uh, Dia Barakat uh, is a dental student, was a dental student at UNC. Months before his killing, he was involved in a debate about Gaza on Twitter, and he said the following, quote, It's so freaking sad to hear people saying we should kill Jews or kill Palestinians as if that's going to solve anything. Shake my head. Now, the other two were studying human biology and uh, architecture and environmental design. So these people were Americans. And they were 100% Americanized and moderate. And the American Muslim community, virtually across the board, is just that. In fact, we've covered polls. Uh, Raw Story reported on one, I think it was either Gallup or Pew, they basically asked all these different uh, religious groups, or just diff different groups in general, is it ever okay to do violence against uh, civilians? And in, in the U.S., the Muslim community was the highest percentage. More Muslims than any other group said it's never okay to do violence against civilians. Behind them, it was atheists, and way at the bottom, it was uh, Protestants and Christians. So there's... A lot of evidence that, especially the American Muslim community, incredibly moderate. I mean, look at the uh, statistics on terrorism in America as well. Uh, it's 56%, according to a 2009 Department of Homeland Security study, 56% of the terrorism and uh, attempts at terrorist attacks in America are done by uh, anti-government extremists, not done by Muslims. So, again, I want to stress here through and through that we're talking about Overwhelmingly a moderate Muslim community all around America. But uh, these Muslims were gunned down in cold blood. Now, their killer is 46-year-old Craig Stephen Hicks. He described himself as an atheist and anti-theist. Quote, a regular social media user. His last three posts were a cute dog video about the Pavlov effect, a viral advert for Air New Zealand involving mountain bikes, and a picture from United Atheists of America asking, quote, Why radical Christians and radical Muslims are so opposed to each other's influence when they agree about so many I uh, ideological issues? Or I should say, why are radical Christians and Muslims opposed when they agree on so many issues? The Independent reports, quote, TV programs like liked by Hicks include The Atheist Experience, Criminal Minds, and Friends. Uh, while he describes himself as a fan of Thomas Paine's The Age of Reason and Richard Dawkins' The God Delusion, Hicks pictures uh, largely consistent... I'm sorry, Hicks pictures largely consist of images with text mocking religion and supporting atheism, but include images of himself and his wife at Disneyland, what he describe and what he describes as his loaded 38 revolver now all that information is important all that information was given in all the different articles and here's this next part which is also very interesting and very important the cops say the following quote our preliminary investigation indicates that the crime was motivated by an ongoing neighbor dispute over parking now you also had his father come out and say, that's not true, I think this is a hate crime. But then you also had his wife come out and say, that's absolutely not true. Uh, look at all of his Facebook posts. He's, he's anti-racism, anti-bigotry, and they go, she goes down a list and she says, this absolutely is over a parking dispute. I know, um, his wife. So you have conflicting reports about what exactly the motivation uh, for this hideous and grotesque murder is. So let me be crystal clear about this. This ignorant, 
idiotic, murderous scumbag if he, in fact, uh, killed partly because of his atheism and he felt like he was pushed in that direction because of his atheism, he missed the point of atheism and secularism. It breaks my heart to see that in his mind, he essentially agreed with people like Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris and myself on intellectual issues. Obviously, he doesn't understand that we are the first to say violence is never the answer. Now, again, I want to be clear, there's a big question mark as to the motivations because there are conflicting issues. And also, there's a problem of Huffington Post and The Independent, they only reported on his atheism at the beginning. And they said, hate crime, hate crime, hate crime, hate crime, hate crime. What's funny is that the New York Times, when they released their article, and they released it before Huffington Post or Independent, in the first paragraph, they say, well, actually, the, in the police and the investigators say this had to do over a dispute over a parking space. So it's weird how the New York Times article was up for hours, and then the Huffington Post article in the Independent, hours later, when they wrote their initial articles, they didn't mention that. They didn't mention the dispute over a parking space. They didn't mention that at all, but they focused heavily on his atheism. Strange. It's almost like they were inclined to only put certain information. So now, I'm going to go ahead and get to what I think is some disastrous hypocrisy in a, in a second. But understand, man, atheists are 0.07% of the prisoners in the United States of America, and 93% of the members of the National Academy of Sciences are atheists. And that's a way to illustrate that, by and large, we're talking about an overwhelmingly peaceful community and a community that cares deeply about intellectual pursuits. Now, furthermore, some 51% of atheists uh, and those described as agnostics told Pew Research that they are liberal. That's compared to 32% who say they're moderate, and only 13% say they're conservative. So as a group, they are one of the more uh, liberal groups out there. And of course, hand-in-hand -hand with liberalism is an idea of we are against violence, we're only for war as a matter of last resort, and we are typically in favor of tolerance and open-mindedness. So what this means is, by and large, as a community, we believe in civil liberties, and we believe in human dignity, and we believe in multiculturalism. That's very important. That's one of the core beliefs that we talk about here on this show. Now, also understand, when I lash out at religion, it's not because I want to take a gun and convert people. It's because I want to win on the battlefield of concepts and ideas. And the way to do that is to discuss the ideas and say, here's why I think we're right, and here's why I think you're wrong. Now, this hideous murderer... He also was a staunch gay rights advocate. And he also was a staunch gun rights advocate. So I find it weird that people across the board are going, look at his atheism, 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 atheism. But I don't hear anybody going, gay rights, gay rights, cared about gay rights, cared about gay rights, cared about gay rights. I, don't, I care about gun rights, care about gun rights, care about that, care about that. So why are you focusing on certain parts of his identity and not other parts of his identity? And you're you're trying to make a connection between the atheism and the action, but not the belief in gay rights and not the belief in gun rights and his action. Here's the way I know the shooting wouldn't have happened if he didn't have a gun. And if, say, let's say he had a psychological history of depression or what have you, uh, or a past criminal history. If he did, I don't know if he did, but that would be a reason for a background check and to deny him a gun. But I, I digress from that. I don't want to go down that path. But here's the the part of the story that's really pissing me off. Now, obviously, I'm over the top pissed off at the murders. I mean, we see this violence all the time in the United States of America and around the world, and it's just grotesque, and I couldn't condemn it any more strongly than I do. But typically, when we discuss these things, there are two camps. When we discuss violence in the name of ideologies, there are two camps. One camp says, well, you always have to look at the consequences of beliefs, and the ideology is always key to it. It's always important. That's always the main thing. The ideology is going to lead to the actions. And then there's the other camp that says, 
Well, no, don't look at the ideology. That's way secondhand if it's even in the picture at all. What really matters is the real world issues, right? So, for example, when we talk about Al Qaeda, right, or ISIS, what do we often talk about on the show? We say, okay, look, you don't just look at the religious aspect of it. Sure, that's a big part of it, but who made Al Qaeda more popular? Well, the U.S. We essentially went into the region in the Middle East, we killed everything in sight, we killed a lot of civilians, and we increased recruitment for these groups, and we gave them a better argument than they had. So, in other words, people look at the situation as complex and real-world events affected, and then you have to take into account economics and poverty and sociology and... It just real things that we always point to and say, well, this, this explains why something happened. But when there's an atheist who does it like this idiot here, what happens? All of a sudden, all the people who look for the deeper reason for violence, because it can't just be the ideology. It's not just Islam. It can't just be Islam. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it. They were provoked, and America did this, and the West did that, and then there was the war in Iraq, and this person died, and they increased recruitment, and it can't just be that. It has to do with uh, the socio-political situation. It can't just be the ideology. Now, all of a sudden, all the people who said that are saying, no, it's only the ideology. Atheism, 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 atheism. Look, anti-theism. I had people tweeting me earlier saying, come out and condemn this. Come out and condemn this. Do you not understand? I'm the person that does videos every time there's some sort of Muslim terrorist attack where I come out and I say, it's not all Muslims. And hey guys, be careful here. Don't tell these people that they need to condemn it because then you're just default assuming that they agree with ISIS violence or Muslim terrorism. And that's a ridiculous assumption. Obviously, the overwhelming majority of Muslims don't agree with ISIS terrorism. And to tell them, hey, condemn it, that means you're saying, I think you agree with it unless you say you don't. And people are coming to me and saying that? Condemn, condemn this as if I agree with it. People went to fucking Richard Dawkins. They were like, oh, hey, condemn this, condemn this, condemn this. You think Richard Dawkins agrees with this? Point to something in The God Delusion, which is the book that this guy liked, but point to the line in The God Delusion that says, hey, go out and kill people you disagree with. Point to that line. I'll wait. It'll be a while. So what's pissing me off is massive, raging hypocrites. All these hashtags about uh, on uh, Twitter after the Charlie Hebdo situation, you know, uh, got, can't blame all Muslims, don't blame all Muslims, understand that this is an anomaly, this is not representative of the ideology, don't even look at the ideology, look at the political situation, but now when an atheist does it, it it's atheism, atheism, look, he's an anti-theist, atheism, atheism. No. The real answer is, you have to look on a case-by-case -case basis, obviously, but usually when you talk about any violence in the name of any ideology, it's a soup of reasons. So, if people are being consistent, all the liberals who said, it's never the ideology, look at the real-world situation, you should be saying the same thing now. You should be saying, atheism, who cares? That, that, that doesn't mean, that's not the reason why he did what he did. Look at the other situations. Look at the parking space dispute. That has a lot more to do with it than, than his belief in atheism. That's ridiculous to blame it on his belief in atheism. All the liberals should be saying that if they want to be consistent. They should all be saying that if they want to be consistent. The idea that you pin it all on atheism and you blame atheism is ridiculous. It's as ridiculous as just blaming Islam when you have, uh, you know, certain terrorist attacks. And on the flip, the flip side is true too. You can't just blame it. Usually you just can't blame it all on the real world uh, circumstances because ideology does play a role in it as well. So, but all I want to see is consistency, and I'm not seeing it. All the liberals who scream about, No! Don't get mad at all Muslims when this guy does a terrorist attack, right? You should be saying the same thing about atheists right now, and you're not doing that. And when you look at the totality of the situation that atheists face, you understand that there is real discrimination against atheists. For fuck's sake, atheists can't run for office in seven states. It's on the state books that they can't do it. Now, thankfully, the federal government protects them and says, hey, constitutionally, that's wrong. You need to allow them to run for office. So they have that protection, but it says something that it's on the state books. It shows you a mindset towards atheists. Atheists are less electable than Muslims in America. There was a poll on this recently. More Americans would vote for Muslims than vote for an atheist. I mean... Muslims face a lot of discrimination in America, but to be below them on a, in, a, in a polling survey, oh my God, that shows there's real discrimination. It's the one group that a majority of people 
don't want their kids to marry. Atheists. It's the one group that gets a majority support. If they're a Democrat family, they'll say, sure, Republican, fine. Oh, different religion, fine, no problem. But when it comes to atheism, that's the one where they, the majority agree, no, I don't want you to marry an atheist. I just want to see the consistency. All the people who argued, it's you can't just look at Islam when there's a, a terrorist attack, a Muslim terrorist attack. Look at the entire situation, right? You need to say the same thing about this, and you're not saying the same thing about this. I'm getting tweets all day long. He's an anti theist. He was an anti theist. He was an anti theist. Great. So what? That means you're get, you're going to shoot people in the face if you're an anti theist. For I'm an anti theist. Anti theism is easier than atheism. People not understand that? Anti-theism just means, hey, I don't think any of the religions are true. Oh, yep. What a crazy thing to believe. I bet you you're going to start waging a holy war. When a Christian or a Muslim does violence, you say it can't just be the ideology. But when an atheist does it, you say it's just the ideology. Absurd.